Hi, I'm Ashley Rodriguez, owner and lead designer at Garden and Grace Florals, based in Gainesville, Florida. We specialize in destination wedding and editorial event design. And today, and thanks to Mayesh and the Design Star series, we're going to be showing you a few videos about how we create incredible installations underwater. So we hope you enjoy the creative process and learn a little bit as well. So I'm thrilled today, I'm joined by Kimber Greenwood, owner of Water Bear Photography. Kimber has been in this industry diving for over 20 years, doing an incredible portfolio of work in underwater photography. I am just fangirling all the time over you. We're also friends and just genuinely support each other, which I think is huge, particularly for women-owned businesses. Um, but today, we're gonna talk with Kimber about how we thought about the creative process for this shoot. And Kimber, thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. I have been very excited about this. When Ashley approached me about this shoot, I was so excited and I wanted to come up with a concept that incorporated her already very well established sort of messy yet editorial style that I'm a really big fan of. Additionally, my work incorporates many fine art elements. So we wanted to stay very true to both of our styles and seek a inspiration that would have common ground for the both of us. So that's how we came up with the idea of doing an underwater English garden, editorial, ethereal, yeah. some kind of installation along these Completely lines. Completely whimsical underwater coral reef, basically. Yes. <laughs> So in thinking about this design, we, I wanted to really make sure that we're not only thinking about what types of flowers will be best underwater um, for long periods of time, but also what will give us that whimsical, you know, coral reef underwater English garden straight out of a Bridgerton set feel. So, you know, things like whimsical floating flowers that we've threaded up, you know, from the bottom of the pool base. And then we also wanted to do vines hanging down. Truly unique flowers that, that don't look like the typical um, English garden, but would really be part of this ethereal look that we're creating, you know, completely from our creative minds, which I love. And then especially what I love, Kimber, is when we work together, you're able to take these ideas and say to me from a photography perspective, you know, what do we have to think about to make this shoot come together? Um, so I would love for you to maybe share a little bit about that. If you feel comfortable doing that, you know, what the things that then you think about when we, when we talk about these designs. So I love the sketches that you showed me and how they are very editorial and organic feeling. And I wanted to keep that style into this shoot. Some things that I'm really inspired by are the old masters and a very fine art sort of feel. So here's a mood board that I put together going off of sort of that ethereal, underwater, almost watercolor-esque yeah. feeling. Yeah. So I looked at a lot of images by Monet and Monet and some of these other great painters. Mm -hmm. And I, what I really loved is the images, the idea of we're looking across a garden with almost a blue sky, but instead of a blue sky, it's blue water for our shoot. So these are some of the ideas I came up with. I loved a really beautiful soft light, going with that Bridgerton fine art English almost feeling. Yep. I think that these will really serve us well. Uh, for a shoot of this magnitude, I know that we need to bring in some outside help. Exactly. <laughs> it's going to be a little ambitious for us to much. do it on our own. So I reached out to my friend Aileen of Baby Dream Backdrops and she's agreed to custom design a backdrop based off of our mood boards for us for the shoot specifically. So that is something I'm incredibly excited about. Additionally, I think that going in our theme of women supporting women, mm -hmm. let's try to reach out to some other locally women-owned businesses. I love it. Awesome. So we'll need models, mm -hmm. we'll need gown, we'll need, we have our backdrop. Right and our florals, of course. Lots and lots of flowers. And what else do you think we'll need for this? So, you know, I am envisioning that we will learn as we go, as we always do. Um, so I know that in the past, we have been able to kind of troubleshoot with things like that. And I foresee a lot of that um, in the next segment of our video, which will show how we're actually doing this. 
Um, but I think that's fantastic and I always appreciate your photography specialty eye in all of this, particularly when it comes to the colors of what we're doing. So in thinking about the challenges for this, I know from the floral perspective, you know, I chose to have stems, number one, that were sustainably sourced in the U.S., which is really important to me, and I'm thrilled that Mayash did that for us, um, but also stems that are sturdy, that can stay in the water for long periods of time, that will be the right color for you. So that kind of leads me into my questions for you about, you know, what do you foresee as the challenges and what we have to think about for the shoot, for sure. Absolutely. There are so many different challenges when you are shooting underwater versus set on land. For instance, even the colors become distorted and muted underwater. Which I had no idea before, right. by the way. Yeah. The, the first colors that we lose are going to be our short spectrum colors, our reds, our oranges, and our yellows. And the longest wavelength is going to be our blue. So that's why when you go underwater and you see normal underwater photography, everything's that blue-green tinge. So we want to make sure that we are accommodating for that. Additionally, we know that we want a set that our model can interact with. Yes. I think that's something that's incredibly important to both Ashley and I is that we really believe in creating an interactive set. Absolutely. We don't want a static, stale pictures. We Must want something be 3D. Yes, something very organic. Uh -huh. So that's going to be a challenge as well because yeah. especially from a safety standard, we need to build a set that can be moved around that has moving pieces and parts but is also going to be safe for our models right. to function in and we'll talk about our safety segment once we get to the actual mm -hmm. shoot installation day. And then I think the other big challenge that Ashley and I have faced in the, in the past again. is that fresh florals are incredibly buoyant. Right. So we're going to have to figure out really buoyant. <laughs> what flowers can we sink? What flowers are going to be impossible to work with? What flowers are going to have delicate stems that are going to slice through and not be restrained? So these are a lot of problems that we're going to have to solve together. And I think that let's, you know, let's go to Home Depot, let's walk the aisles, let's see what we can brainstorm. Yep. Since no one has done this before, we're kind of the first. It's going to be a lot of trial and error. As always, right. As yep. always, but you know what? We figure yep. it out, yep. we adapt, improvise, and overcome. Yep. And I think the weight situation is going to be something we're going to have to accommodate for mm -hmm. and the frailty of the stems as well because we're going to be leaving these in place. Right, for hours. I mean, hours. probably days, honestly. <laughs> right, right. We're going to have to do an installation yeah. day and then probably another 24 to at least 30, 35 hours of shoot time afterward. So this is going to be a piece that you are literally installing right. with a team of people, of course. Right. But it's going to then have to stay in the water and look yeah. good for that period, for that period exactly. of time. Yeah. So it has to be a lot of different things. It has to be movable, it has to be flexible, but right. it also has to be sturdy. And there's a lot of challenges that are going to come when we sink an entire underwater garden. But I'm so excited and I can't wait to do this. <laughs> Thank you. So we're going to go to Home Depot, my favorite place. I know it's yours too. Um, as creatives, right? We have to go there. But um, in thinking about this set and the visuals and the depth that we want to create, I know we had talked about you know PVC, various types of materials that we need to make sure we can um, enhance and weight down and maybe drill holes through. It's like a whole <laughs> series of things, which we will show in the next video. Um, but what else would you foresee us needing at Home Depot as we you know, walk through the aisles? <laughs> so we're going to need a really resilient framework because that's yeah. going to be the entire frame of the garden that we are going to sink in the deep end of the pool. Mm -hmm. In that framework, we're going to need some way, whether it's a mesh or a, right, a type of right. fence panel perhaps, yep. some type of grid that we can attach flowers to in different clumps so that it's going to create a, a layered garden effect. Yep. Because if we just have a single line of flowers, that's going to be really visually uninteresting. Right, even from a floral perspective, right? Right, exactly. we want that exactly. depth. And the only way you're gonna get it is by having it yep. actually present. Yep. So we need a way to create a literal layered garden we're going to yep. need a way to create both foreground and background pieces for extra dimension. Mm -hmm. yep. And then we're going to need a way to secure it all because if we use things like wire, it could potentially slice the stems off with the weight of the water and the buoyancy of the flowers. Right. So we could have a lot of flowers floating up to the pool right. and that's not something that we wanna have. We wanna make sure that things stay put. But then we also have to counteract that with the woodier stems of say roses. Exactly. Are they going to be too <laughs> buoyant to sink? So I'd say let's go to Home Depot, let's walk yeah, the aisles <laughs> and see what possibilities there are for not only for the grid itself to mount the flowers onto, right. but also for the securing pieces, whether we use a, a floral tape or a exactly. wire or a zip tie, 
some ways that we can kind of problem solve that so that our installation once sunk stays sunk exactly and looks good in the process awesome thank you kimber for all of the great insight from that photographer's perspective <laughs> absolutely these are things that i, I don't think regular people think they about do when doing they shoots do right. because these aren't challenges that we face on land yeah. right so when we move right. into the underwater environment we're just going to have yeah. a lot more challenges but it is going to be so so worth it, it <laughs> I can't wait. Well, Kimber, I can't thank you enough for being my friend, for being an incredible photographer, for making this happen. Um, so stay tuned for the next part of this series where we actually show you go underwater and create this amazing underwater installation. And thank you again to Mayesh for making this all possible. Thank, thank you so much. It is going to be an adventure. <laughs>